Hi, everybody. Welcome to Convertible Conversations today. We're in the middle of this week of looking at the fact that God has always wanted relationship with us. That's, I believe, his single greatest desire. So, God created the first man and woman. Everything was great until they decided to go their own way. Then they started believing lies about God and about themselves. And time goes on for a while. God, it seems, let them experience the results of living in the dark. They didn't know what they were doing. I and my belief is, and I could be wrong about this, certainly, but my belief is that in order to show what something is really like, you almost have to have something the opposite of it to compare it to. If all you have is what something's like and you can never compare it to something else, you can't know how good or how bad or whatever that it is. I believe, and again, I could be wrong about this, but that's why God allowed sin to happen when, of course, he knew in advance when he created us that it would happen. Because the only way to fully comprehend and understand unconditional love, which is who God is and what God is, is to see the opposite and to see the need for unconditional love. God chose a certain group of people, the Israelites, not because they were special, but because he is special. And he chose them, he could have chosen any people group, to reveal to them who he is, in his words, so that they would be blessed and they could be a blessing to the whole rest of the world. He chose one people group to reveal himself to so that then they could be his ambassadors to bless the whole rest of the world. He wanted relationship with them more than anything else. Unfortunately, they didn't, and probably no people group would have either. And they could have had a relationship with God, but instead they said, no, no, just Tell us what to do. Don't get close to us and we'll do it. God said, I'm going to come and meet with Moses, who was the leader of that group at the time. God comes down and there's a big cloud over this mountain. God's in the cloud and he says, come on up and meet with me. And the people said, no, 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 no. We don't want to get close to you. We'll send Moses up and you just tell him what to do and we will surely do it. <laughs> well, they didn't know what they were getting into. So God gave them the law. How much of the entire law he actually gave Moses, we don't know. I believe he for sure gave them the Ten Commandments. All the other myriad of laws, uh, could have, Moses could have uh, come up with them on his own. That's controversial, so you know, don't worry about that. But Scripture does say in the New Testament that the law came through Moses, but grace and truth were revealed in Jesus Christ. So God gave them the law, to show them they couldn't have a relationship with him through the law. The law was good in that it clarified what's right and what's wrong, although eating of the tree of right and wrong was never what God wanted. What he wanted was a relationship. So it did show how to live a godly way and how not to live a godly way. And the law is holy, Romans 7, 12 says. The commandment is holy and righteous and good. There's nothing wrong with the law to find out, you know, how we should live. However, the law has absolutely no power whatsoever. It's like looking in a mirror. It can show if you're clean or dirty, but it can't clean you up. It can't change you. The law has no ability to help us whatsoever. So, God let people live under the law to show them, no, you can't get right with God. You can't have a relationship with him by keeping the law. You need not only a savior to save you from not doing the right things, but to save you from unbelief in believing wrong things about God and not understanding who God is and who you are. So Jesus came. And we know that Jesus Many things that Jesus taught contradicted with what's written in the Old Testament law. Jesus would say, for example, in Matthew 5 and elsewhere, you've heard it said, and then he would quote the law, and he would say, then he said, but I say, and it would be different. So we know that Jesus fulfilled the law. He set it aside, made it obsolete, uh, all of those different things. So none of us who live today have ever been under the law. The law ceased at Jesus' finished work at the cross. None of us have ever been under the law contrary to what we've probably been taught, what I was taught, and what I believe. All right. Hope that's helpful. we got two more days on this. I think you're going to enjoy it and be blessed by it. I'll see you next time. Thanks.